Hey everybody, welcome to our video on the file system object in Microsoft Access. In this video we'll be focusing specifically on the drive object and the drives collection. I'll be honest, the ways I've used the file system object prior to now have really just been to manipulate files, really to, to, to see if they exist or to copy them, move them, rename them, uh, sometimes open them to, for, for reading and writing. But in researching this video, I've found there's a lot more to the file system object than I had really paid attention to before. So I decided to do a deeper dive and look at several aspects of the file system object. And I decided to break them up into different videos. So that's how we arrived at a, a video on just the drive object. So let's get started by looking at a form that I built to show us drive information. I'm going to show it to you in action first, and then we'll go into the code and see how we produced the results on the screen. Now, but before we get started, though, there are two ways to get a, a reference to a drive object. One is to use the drives collection and pull one of the items out of the collection. Another method is to get a file, really any file, and grab a reference to the drive that that file is on. And that's the method we're going to use in this form. I'm going to click on one of these access databases, really just any file in here, at the end, click OK. So I have all sorts of information on here. We have the drive name up here at the top. We've got the drive letter in two places. This was obtained in two different ways. We'll see that in the code in a few minutes. We have the volume name. And this is information you can get by right-clicking on your drive and uh, showing properties. We can get the free space, available space, and the total size from the file system object. And we can calculate then the used space. Get the drive type, the file system, the serial number, and the root folder. So let's head over to our code and see how we did this. So I have a single button on that form over there, and here's the click event for the form. Now before we get started, let's take a look at the references that I'm using. We're using the file open dialog, and we're also going to use the file system object. Now I have chosen to, to write this code using early binding for both. Okay, you don't have to do that, especially with the file system object. You'll see lots of examples on the web of using late binding. That's where, where you don't need a reference to the DLL, and you just create generic objects. In this case, I wanted to have the, uh, the assistance of IntelliSense, so I used early binding. So let's take a look at our references. What we're using in this video is the, the Microsoft Office object library. That's going to give us the file dialog here. And the Microsoft scripting runtime is what we're using for the file system object. So the first thing we're doing in this code here is opening up our file dialog. And this was, again, to get that get that file that we used so that we can get to a drive. I'm not going to go into this I'm not going to go into this code. I have another video specifically uh, for the file office dialog. But I'm using the file dialog file picker in this case because I wanted to get a file. So after we get our, our file, we put that file name into the a, a text box on the form. So we can hold on to it. And here is our early binding version of creating our file system object object. I've called it FSO. Right above it here, commented out, will be the way to do it uh, a late binding without the DLL reference. Okay, You'll see this all over the place. That's just fine. I love to use IntelliSense whenever I can when developing code. And then um, you know, if I want to use late binding for the actual application, uh, come back later and you, know, you just uncomment this one and comment that one out, that one out and you change your, uh, change your dimensions up here. You would change this from a file system object to an object and everywhere in your code where you have a set statement instead of you you would find that in your dimensions as well and change those to generic objects and you're all set so after we create our file system object called FSO I want to get a good absolute path to the file we just got there is an FSO method called get absolute path name you give it a file name and this can be a file path that is abbreviated in some way, and this will give you the actual fully qualified path name and return it as a string. And I've put that in a, a string called file spec. And I experimented with this on a, a network elsewhere, and I was disappointed to find that the path returned by get absolute path name is not actually a UNC. It is still an ordinary path. So if you have a, a network drive mapped to a drive letter on your machine, you'll get the drive letter and not the UNC. However, still, for, for most of the methods below here, they need a full path. You can't give it a, 
a, uh, an abbreviated path of any sort, so it's probably a good idea to just always get used to doing this. So using FSO, we, you can get the same information several different ways, and I, I, I alluded to it on the form a minute ago. I said that we have information from several sources here. So at the top here I have from FSO, and we're getting the drive name from the FSO. So that's what we're doing at the very top here. So text drive is the text box that we are writing our data into here. So I've got a little bit of formatting mixed in with the, uh, the, the gathering of data. We're appending strings to one another with carriage returns and line feeds in between to format the appearance of the data in that text box. So this is where our from FSO label is coming from. And in drive name, we're using the file system object get drive name, which takes a file as a parameter. And as you can see, it returns the letter C, the name of that drive. Next, we're showing the drive letter from a file reference. So this is one of those you can get from two places. You can give it a file and get the drive letter straight from the file. So the, fi the file system object get file method takes a fully qualified path to a file and returns a file object. This file one I have defined up here at the top as a file. Okay. There's our file. And then say file1.drive, so the drive is a property of the file object. And then below that, we're going to gather all the information we can from the drive reference itself. Now to do that, we have to get a reference to the drive. So we get a reference to a drive by using the file system object get drive method, and it takes a drive name as input. So we're going to get the drive name from our file, okay, and then use the get drive from that to give us reference to a drive. And this variable drive is a drive object. And we're going to feed it into a generic reference. So we're going to display very quickly the drive dot drive letter property. That is this one right there. And then we're going to call a generic function that I wrote to do the rest of the work. The reason I wanted to do that is I want to be able to get this same information on a drive from another form that we're going to look at in just a minute. In that other form, we're going to loop through the entire drive's collection. So I wanted to have an easy way to be able to get all this drive information from multiple drives in a row. So that's why I encapsulated all this logic into a function. This function takes a reference to the drive as a parameter, and I also decided to, to give reference to our file system object. And the only reason I wanted to do that is I didn't want to declare a file system object again in the function itself. Since we've already declared one here, you know, why declare it a second time in a public function? So let's head over to our public function and see what it does. And I want to make a quick, I'd like to make a quick note about something bad that I did here. Okay, I've decided to build a generic, I'm using air quotes right now, you can't see them, uh, a generic function to return information about a drive, whatever drive I want to feed to it. But as you can see in here, if you look closely, I've got all this string formatting in here. So this is not generic coding, actually. It's half generic, all right? What I've done here, you know, the, the idea behind having a generic function is it's somewhat decoupled from the consumer, right? You, you, a consumer asks for information from a generic function, and the consumer goes away and does whatever it wants to with the information. What I've done here is I've coupled my generic function to what I know the caller is going to be doing with it. And that's not really as generic as it should be. I'm doing it, though, really as a way, here as an example, in this video only, as a way to decrease the amount of code that we had to look at. This is not really the right way to do a generic function. Instead, we should be returning just the information and letting the calling code do the formatting on its side. So first, we're going to get the drive type and associate a string with the drive type, because the drive type is going to return us a number. So there is a, a constant we can use, and, I, and what I just did here is just made a case statement out of it and turn the number into a, a string. And then we're going to test the drive type because if it is a network drive, we want to use the share name as a, a label, if you will. If it's not a network drive, then we can use the volume name. So depending on what type of drive we have here, we're going to show either the either share name label and the share name or the volume name label and the volume name. And after that, then it's just a matter of getting all the various 
properties of the drive object. So there's use space, which I said was calculated as a drive.total size minus a drive.free space, and I'm simply formatting it here to have commas, and I put the word bytes on the end of it. Uh, free space is drive.free space, available space is drive.available space, total size is drive.total size, drive type we already looked at above, drive.drive type, and then the string that I built in our case statement above. File system is drive.file system, there's drive.serial number, and drive.root folder. And that is it. And then I'm going to take the string that I've been building, concatenating onto, and return it as our function. This function returns a string, a formatted string. Like I said, not generic as it should be. Returns it back to here, which we just simply concatenated onto the end of the information we already wrote to our text box, which is all here. Next, we'll look at the drives collection. Pull up our form here for the drives. Let's go ahead and get rid of our drive info. So what I want to do with the drives collection is get a reference to all the drives on my machine and then get that same information from that public function for each of the drives. So we'll click on our button here and you see what we get. I'm going to have to expand this a little bit vertically. and Get my, my hard drive here. We just saw this information a minute ago. Uh, these drives were not ready, so we can't get any information from those. We'll look at that code in a second. Uh, I've got two backup drives here, I and K. J is not ready. And then I plugged in a thumb drive just for the heck of it, just to see, just, just for fun. And believe it or not, and, and interestingly enough, this is a single thumb drive. This is one of those, this is one of those drives that has an operating system on it, so you actually, it actually appears to be two drives. So let's head back over to our code. So let's close form drive, open up form drives collection. Here we go, very short code here. So I've got one button on the form. We dimension our file system object right here. Like I said, we're using the drives collection. So I've dimensioned drive call as drives. And then of course we have reference to a drive, drive as a drive. We're clearing out our text box before we get started. Uh, early binding for our file system object, and then getting the drives collection is very easy. It's file system object dot drives, and that's it. From there, then we just have a loop for each drive in the drive collection. We'll go through and do these things, and then get the next drive. So all I did here was a little bit of formatting here. Drive letter got the drive dot drive letter gave us a, uh, a a new line, and then tested drive is ready properly. If it's ready, we can go get inf information. If the drive is not ready, we don't want to do anything with it. We, just, we start blowing up if we try to get uh, properties from it if it's not ready. So if it is ready though, then we just called our same generic function we did a minute ago, giving it a reference to the drive we have right now, the drive we're on as we go through the loop, and our file system object. And it spits back a formatted string of text, and we just load it into our text drive, and we just load it into our text box, and then when we're done, we add an extra carriage control line feed, give us some space in between each drive, like this, and loop around and get the next drive. And that's all there is to it. So that's it for the drive object and the drives collection. Not very complicated code, and actually not very much to it at all. So look for some more videos from me shortly on the file system object, uh, specifically on folders and files. I'd also like to remind you that I have a blog that is a companion to these videos. On the blog, you can look at any of these videos you'd like from there as well. Uh, also accompanying them, any that have code, there'll also be a blog entry that has the full code listing that we've seen in the video, along with some explanation. Now, I'll admit that the earlier videos I did, those blog entries are really just code listings. But as I've done more videos, I've decided to expand on the blog entries a little bit and add some description to them. However, the explanations I have in the videos are a little more in-depth than what are in written form on the blog. So I have a link to my blog in the description down below, as well as a link directly to the blog entry that has the code listing for this video. Hope you got something out of this video and enjoy watching it, and we'll see you next time.